Ever pinch pennies all year for that one family vacation only to feel the budget blues afterwards? If so, I was just like you. After three vacationless years, I stumbled on credit card rewards travel and cracked the code to amazing vacations that I could actually afford. Welcome to Wonderland on Points. In this podcast, you will discover how opening credit cards strategically can save you thousands on travel. We're not just dreamers anymore. We're two adventurous moms turning dreams into reality. Join us as we spill all the points and miles secrets. And contrary to popular belief, you don't have to spend a million dollars to earn a million points. Traveling on credit card points isn't reserved for those with overflowing bank accounts. It's for everyday people like you and me, learning to turn routine expenses into free travel. Consider us your points travel guides. This is Wonderland on Points. Let the adventure begin. Welcome back, everyone, to the Wonderland on Points podcast. We are so excited that you are here. This is your host, Mary Ellen. And I'm Joe. This episode has been a long time coming because we are talking about our absolute favorite of all things points and miles, and that is Hyatt. I I can't say enough good things, and I have been wanting to deep dive this for a while, and we are here. But before we get into it, Mary Ellen, did anything (laughs) interesting happen to you this past week? I think... Enough interesting things happen to you for the both of us. <laughs> I wanted to give you an opportunity before I talk about my near-death experience. Girl, let's just deep dive right now into <laughs> your near-death experience. Because you had me worried sick about you heading to Kansas City in apparently the middle of a snowstorm. Joe, what were you thinking? Oh, well, a number of things. First of all. I was uh, misinformed on the rules of the place where my dog is boarded. They have a rule that upon pickup, if you pick up after noon, you pay for an entire another day. So you can, if you want, leave them overnight, cost the same. I thought it was the same on the front end. I thought if you drop off before noon, you pay for an extra day. So I planned our trip around us dropping the dog off at noon and then going to Kansas City in order to save the cost of another day of boarding. Okay. I found out after everything I'm about to tell you that that is not the case. You can drop off any time from the time that they open till the time that they close and you are still paying for that day. It doesn't change a thing. And I felt... (laughs) Pretty silly, considering if we had actually gotten out of here at a reasonable time in the morning, we would have missed the entire snowstorm and been in Kansas City before any of this happened, huddled up in our hotel, we would have been fine. I heard that there were people coming from Kansas City to St. Louis that were stuck on the highway for 11 hours. (gasps) It is a three and a half hour trip. Three and a half hours. This was my fear from you. So listeners, I get a message from Joanna that she has been stuck in a ditch in the snow. I am imagining her with no food or water. I'm like texting like crazy. Do you have a blanket? Are you going to be okay? Are you going to be warm? And she's like, oh. And then I'm like, get off your phone because your phone could go dead. And then you won't have a cell phone to call for help. Like what in the world? Oh my goodness. Honestly, we were so blessed in so many ways. This whole experience restored my faith in humanity in every single way. I have never been more glad to be in pickup truck country. We initially got stuck on a hill, like going up a hill. I was like, we're not going to make it. We are we are slipping and sliding and going backwards and going sideways. And it was really terrifying. And, And then we were just stuck. And I get out of my car and I am using my my ice scraper to try to scrape off the ground in front of my tires to try to get <laughs> something to grab onto. Because we're in the middle of a road. There is no shoulder. These are back country roads. There are people behind us. Some people stuck. Some people in big old trucks that are fine and like trying to go around, but also trying not to get too close in case they slide into us. It was a whole thing. And this man and his son just zip right up 
and get out. And he's like, I'm going to pull you up this hill. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, thank you. Like, are you sure? I I don't know how to respond to like such great kindness. Mm. And um, his son gets out with his arm in a sling, just had shoulder surgery, this teenage boy. He's helping his dad hook up my car. He's waving other cars around us. I was like, this is just good people. What a great kid. Oh my gosh, such a good kid. So I was like, man, if my my daughter was a little older, I'd be like, this is the kind of kid you marry, okay? This one yes. right here. Pay attention. Pay, Pay attention. attention. This is what you want in a future husband. But that is not an appropriate thing to point out to a 12-year-old. So I did not. I just I just you thought, could, it. hey, you should point these things out. We want I mean, our you're right. girls to start noticing behaviors in people that are honorable. And I like you that. Know, that is true. I just, you know, she can already be a little boy crazy. So I'm not sure I want to put any more of that into her head. But the, the this, I mean, the story is far longer because we actually like got pulled, got stuck again. He rehooked us up or whatever. But ultimately he decided I'm going to pull you the rest of the way to the kennel. And I was like, that would be great. Thank you so much. Like, I know this is not what you wanted to be doing with your day, whatever. And he's like, you do not have to thank me. I just want you to remember that there are still good people left. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I love that, sir. I love that. So he pulls us, right? We get up a hill. We go down a hill. And my car starts to go very quickly because it's being pulled. And he can go much faster than I can go. And my car also starts just not holding onto the road at all. And I'm like trying to turn my steering wheel both right and left, trying to stay directly behind him. I'm tapping my brakes, like trying to, no, nothing. I am in zero control of where the car is moving. And as he gets going even faster, I literally fishtail off to the right and straight off the side of the road, which goes like this. And my car slid and slid, slid down this embankment and was almost completely on its side. I could not open the doors on the right side of my car because they would bump the ground. It was so scary. My daughter was crying. My dog was very confused. I was more like screaming than crying. I was just because I, it's like you have no control. And it was just, it happened weirdly slow, like in a way where I felt like I should have been able to stop it, but I wasn't. Anyways, then it looks like he's trying to pull us out and it's pulling him backwards. And I thought he was going to come into the ditch too. And I was like terrified. He gets out and he's like, y'all got to get in my truck. There's no way I am getting you out of this ditch. It's not possible. My car just can't handle it on the ice. We'll take you to the kennel. Then hopefully you can call for some help. So we did that. We got in. We went to the kennel. He uh, was so kind. He said, uh, as payment, you all need to take a selfie with me. We can put it on the internet and remind people to be kind to each other. And I thought that was amazing. And so we did that. That's so on my sweet. Instagram. Yes, it was. And and you can see that on my Instagram if you're interested in seeing the face of the kind stranger who helped us out of the snow. Um, but when we got to the kennel, uh, luckily, there were a whole bunch of men that worked there with their big old pickup trucks. And they took me yes. back to my car, hooked me up, and told me exactly what to do in terms of steering to get me out of the ditch and they pull me out of that ditch. It was, I don't, I don't even understand physically how this was possible because the car was like, so almost completely sideways. I was positive. It was just going to fall over. It didn't. It was amazing. And there is not a thing wrong with my car. There is not. That's what I was going to ask. As far as I can tell, not a scratch on it. So that is why. Thank you, kind sirs, for saving my co-host. So I literally have never been more grateful. I didn't have to spend hundreds of dollars calling a tow truck and waiting. Of course, we were then stuck for 
many hours because I wasn't not about Mm. to try to drive anywhere because I knew I was just going to get stuck or go in a ditch again. So we holed up in the parking lot. The employees were all trying to find rides out of there. And most of them knew someone with a pickup truck. So we had come to the conclusion that if like by four or five, we were not able to leave. We were going to hopefully pay someone to get us as far as my my work, which was pretty close. And I had a truck I could borrow there. It was a whole thing. But we were actually able to drive out of there close to like 5 p.m. Yay. Everything started getting melty and was fine. I called you and I was like, we're alive. Um, and also that entire time we had blankets, we had snacks. I had a full tank of gas. Like, Honestly, it was kind of cozy. <laughs> you were it prepared. Just, you were, we were Midwest prepared. We sure were. And we could have sat in the kennel, but it's literally just like either the dog's rooms or like a front lobby that's just like concrete and metal chairs. It's not like cozy. We were much more comfortable in our car, but I don't want anybody to think that they were like, you can't come inside. No, they were. They're very kind. I ended up... After we got the car out of the ditch, I went back inside and I was like, I don't think we're going to Kansas City. So I'll just take the dog back. She can come sit in the car with us. Like, you guys don't need to take care of my dog because I do not think we are going on a trip. So all of that to say, we did not stay in Kansas City on points and miles this weekend. And I was actually a little nervous because if you cancel within one day of your reservation, you usually forfeit a day's points. Right. And so I called. I said, my car is in a ditch. We're in a snowstorm. I somehow don't think we're going to be getting up there tonight. Is there any way I can cancel without a penalty? And Hyatt being who Hyatt is, of course, said yes. And I feel like... It is the perfect segue into our episode of how glorious and amazing all things Hyatt are. So, sorry, that was, I feel like that was a really, really, really long story. But important, because first of all, there are still good people left and be kind to someone today. And second, Hyatt is amazing. And I will go back to Kansas City. I'll have a chance. I was so you bummed. You will. I, I hate so- that it ruined your trip, but I'm glad that good came from it. You met wonderful people who were very kind. Yes. And you learned about um, some Hyatt employees extending some grace and giving you back points. So that is a perfect segue into today. And I'm glad we're finally talking about Hyatt. Mm-hmm. I know, I feel like some people are like, okay, shut up already about Hyatt, Hyatt, this, Hyatt, that. You see it everywhere in the points and miles world. And it's like, okay, so what is so great? Why do all of these points and miles people get so hung up on Hyatt? And so that is our goal today to mm-hmm. m- help our listeners understand what is really about this? Why are you drinking the Hyatt Kool-Aid and why is there such value here and how do we attain that value? Mm-hmm. You preach. I think that there's a lot of things that we're going to go through that are just kind of um, technical. I want to go over the status charts and the award charts, but I want you guys to know that we're not going to dig too deep into the status because we're going to have a globalist, I think, come back on at some point and really talk you through the path to status. Because the the truth about Hyatt is that it is amazing even if you do not have status. Right. It, it really is. Like you can get some very cool things from having status, but just the basic value of the cost on points to stay at some of these places You don't have to earn status to get that. So this episode really is for everybody. It's not only for people that are chasing globalist. That will be a different episode. So let's jump in. Let's tell people the basics of, number one, how do you book a Hyatt hotel? So Hyatt is a transfer partner of Chase. And so some people think that what what I will do is I'll go in my Chase portal with my points and I'll book a Hyatt hotel. 
Mm -hmm. But we're here to remind you that the benefit of having credit card points is being able to use transfer partners and Hyatt is a transfer partner for Chase. So rather than encouraging you to book through the portal, we want to encourage you to learn how to transfer your points directly to Hyatt at a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you have 20,000 Chase points, you zip those over to Hyatt and you have 20,000 Hyatt points. Yes. That's that's the first basic important step to know about where we're going to go from here. And we're going to tell you about different point redemptions, but we are talking about transferring your points out of the Chase system over to Hyatt. You cannot yes. transfer them back. Once mm -mm. you send them over to Hyatt, they are Hyatt points. Or if you yes. send them over to one of the other transfer partners, an airline, another hotel, though they have become those points and you can't get them back to your Chase account. Yes. So that is the basis of where we're going today. Right. Do not just transfer for fun because you're positive you're going to use these points for Hyatt. The transfers are almost completely instantaneous. So there is absolutely no reason to transfer in advance. And while we're talking about the portals, um, in terms of Hyatt, I have never seen a Hyatt hotel in a portal that is a better value than the transfer. But we right. have to remember that there are some exceptions. And we have heard about those exceptions in our Disney episode with Heather, which you guys should go back and listen to. She talks about how a portal is a great place to book your Marriott's if you are going to Disney. And so it seems like there are exceptions and that you should, especially if you're booking a non-Hyatt, compare your option of transferring your points out versus point, uh, booking through the portal, especially if you have the reserve because you get more in the portal if you have the reserve. So go back and listen to that episode. Um, but for sure, for this Hyatt episode, we are not going to be talking about booking through the portal at all because I have never, ever seen any reason to suggest that you would ever want to book a Hyatt through the portal. So this is like 101, but I have discovered that this is not something that everybody knows how to do. So I'm going to walk you through really quick how to transfer step by step, okay? Step one, make a Hyatt account. If you do not have a Hyatt account, download the app. It'll walk you through it. It will set you up. You will get a member number. Copy that, okay? Then you're going to open the Chase app, scroll down to the ultimate rewards, choose your Sapphire card. Now, if your points are not transferred to your Sapphire card, like if you have an ink or a freedom or something, you do need to transfer them over to the Sapphire. I'm not going to walk you through that. Hopefully, you know. If not, you can Google it. After you choose your Sapphire, either the reserve or the preferred, whatever you're using, scroll down to transfer points to partner, choose hotels, choose Hyatt, choose transfer points. Then it's going to have you enter in that Hyatt member number. And then it'll walk you through the rest of the prompts where you uh, put in the amount you want to transfer. It does have to be increments of 1000 yes. So uh, you might have a little bit extra sitting in your Hyatt account, depending on the total. But um, then you just click OK, and it sends them over for you. And if you go into your Hyatt app, you'll see them almost right away. And you can book yeah. right away. It is so easy. That's and the magic. Mm, That's when the mm, magic happens. It is when the magic happens. And it is seriously magical. And I think I've mentioned this before, you guys, but scrolling your Hyatt app can be more addicting than, <laughs> than social media. Like if you get an idea in your head of a place you want to go, the first thing that a lot of us are doing is like, are there Hyatts there? Honestly, I probably won't go if there are not. The amount of times that I have booked hotels in the Hyatt app on points, because you can cancel them for the most part, all of them you can cancel up into, like you mentioned earlier, right before your stay. So I all the time will book hotels and then, you know, whatever the trip doesn't happen, I get my points back. But I love scrolling that app and I'm like, oh, yes, <laughs> I think I will book this hotel because why not? I can get my points back if I change my mind. My Southwest app and my Hyatt app constantly have like five to seven things booked. It's maybe an overkill. Sometimes I'll have three places or flights booked for the same days. 
because I haven't decided yet. And I just want all the options to be available to me. So that is, that's a me problem. Let's tell people now what the, the type of reward chart that Hyatt has. Let's Mm -hmm. explore that because that's a big piece of why we like Hyatt over some of the other hotel chains. So talk, speak to a little bit about that and about it having a, what we call a fixed award chart. Exactly. So Hyatt is a fixed award chart versus Marriott and IHG, which use something called dynamic pricing. And the fixed award chart simply means that they price based on a category of hotel, not based on the dollar amount. Whereas dynamic pricing has to do with how much it costs per night and all of that kind of stuff. So you are going to find amazing deals because sometimes there's a category four Hyatt that's three, four, five hundred dollars a night, but you are always going to pay the same amount, whether or not the dollar amount per night changes. Now, there is a little bit of variation. So it's important to note that there's off-peak pricing, standard pricing, and peak pricing. And that just has to do with demand and time of year and all of that kind of stuff. So you can look up a chart. I'm not going to go through all of it, but I'm going to give you maybe category one, four, and then we'll talk a little bit about eight. But the categories are one to eight. And they really span the whole spectrum from like, you know, just your basic Hyatt Place type hotel all the way up to like your park Hyatts and then your all inclusives and that kind of stuff. A category one is going to be 3500 in the off peak, 5000 standard, 6500 in the peak season. And that's going to be like very, very basic bare bones hotels. A category four, which is where we're getting into the nicer hotels. I think Regencies are a category four. Um, I think you have some more examples of different category hotels that you can give in a second. But a four is going to be 12,000 for off peak, 15,000 for standard, 18,000 for peak. If you go all the way up to category eight, this is like the Park Hyatt is a category eight. So Park Hyatt, New York, you are going to be paying 45,000 points a night for their peak pricing. But that is as high as it gets. And if you think about that in terms of Marriott, you will easily see even a basic Marriott for 45,000 points a night. Oh, yeah. Easily. Uh, Just Mm -hmm. very bare bones Marriott. So This is why we think it's such a good value. Hold on to your points, save them for Hyatt, because why would you want to stay at, you know, a basic hotel when you could stay at the Park Hyatt New York? So let me give you an example of a Hyatt place. There's a great Hyatt place in Panama City. It's beachfront, beautiful area, great hotel to stay at. These are actual dollar amounts because I was researching for my own family. So we, this spring, had a couple opportunities to travel and we were thinking about going to this Hyatt Hyatt Place, Panama City. And I was looking at some dates in March and then I was looking at some dates in April. And those are very busy times in Panama City because that's spring break. So in March, it's like college spring break. And then April tends to be more, you know, K through 12 spring breaks. So I was looking and the reason the fixed award chart is great is there was peak pricing. So it was going to be 18,000 points per night in either of those months for the March dates I was looking at for the April dates I was looking at. But the actual dollar amount is different. So if Mm -hmm. I was paying with cash in March, when it's around the college spring break season, which, you know, it's not necessarily ideal to take your family of small children to Panama City, but whatever, we have to go when it works for our family, right? <laughs> yes. So it was going to be the the dollar amount is $422. That's the member rate. If you have a basic Hyatt um, account, then you're a basic member rate, $422, 18,000 points. Now, 
I'm sorry, that was in April. That was the April dates. In March, when it's college spring break, it was actually more expensive. It was $560 a night. Now that is a difference of $140 per night more. Mm. If you're paying Mm. cash, $422 versus $560. But the point price is the same. 18,000 points because it's a fixed rate. Yes. So when you are traveling, especially if you can't cater to traveling in the off season, if you need to go places in peak season, the dollar amounts are a lot more, but the Hyatt fixed award chart still has you capped maybe at their peak pricing, but it, it doesn't go beyond that. So I was going to pay 18,000 points per night, whether I went on the really expensive week or the little bit cheaper week. And that's where you can find a lot of value with Hyatt. Amen. I actually got a really good question over on our podcast Instagram. I had somebody reach out asking, when is the right time to use points versus using cash versus the portal? And I thought that was a great question. And now... As I mentioned already, the portal is not a good option for Hyatt. Might be a good option for other things. But since this is specifically about Hyatt, it is a good question to think through. Do you want to pay the cash rate and save your points for that better value? And I think that sometimes people may want to do that. For example... There were some hotels like the Hyatt Place in Orlando across from Universal Studios. It is 8,000 points a night for the dates that we were going in June. And a standard room is about $132 a night. So some people might opt to pay the cash rate because they might want to put their 8,000 points per night towards something a little bit more expensive because really you're only getting about uh, 1.65 cents per point when you're redeeming them for this versus if you hold on to your points and go to maybe the Hyatt Regency Grand Cypress Resort in Orlando, that is a category four. That was for the same dates, $696 a night. And it's 15,000 points. That is 4.64 cents per point. Yes. Love so that. If, if you don't, if, I mean, some people are not math people and that is completely okay. So I'm just going to give you like a quick way that you can figure this out. If you are trying to figure out your cents per point, you multiply the dollar amount by 100 and then you divide by the points. So you're basically turning your dollars into cents and then you are dividing by the amount of points and that will tell you how many cents per point. If if there are other people that did not know that or would have had to really get their wheels turning to figure that out, don't feel bad. You're in good company here. It's okay? so funny because I don't do the math the same way. Oh, how do you do I, it? I figure, well, I, do, I divide the price by the points and then times a hundred. Oh, well, it's okay. It's exactly the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just, just, you have a different order of operations. Slash, I can just ask my husband or my (laughs) fifth grader because they're both better at math than me. So hundred percent, Juliet would have been able to figure that out so fast, but either way, they both get you to the same point. And we've talked a lot on here about how like it's not always about getting the best value. Yes. But when you're talking about Hyatt's specifically and you have the cash, some people don't. I personally do not have a lot of extra cash in our life, in our budget. So for me, I did book the Hyatt place on points, even though it's not the best value. It is where we want to go. It's going to be an amazing trip. I didn't want to stay anywhere fancy. I didn't feel like spending more points, but I also didn't feel like spending the cash. So I'm using it for that. But if you have a good line item in your budget and you set aside thousands of dollars to travel a year, well, then maybe pay the cash rate if you're going to stay somewhere cheap and put those points towards like some of these really cool places. And speaking of really cool places, I feel like you have some really cool places to tell us about. Before we dive back into the heart of today's episode, 
We want to hear from you. Do you have any questions about travel, credit cards, or anything else that we've covered on a podcast episode? We are here to help. Go ahead and reach out to us at wonderlandonpoints at gmail.com with any of your questions, thoughts, or even just to say hello. We absolutely love connecting with our listeners, and your inquiries could be featured on future episodes. If you're looking to maximize your credit card strategy for travel rewards, take advantage of our free credit card consultation. Whether you are a seasoned points collector or you're just starting your journey, we're here to provide personalized advice to elevate your travel experience. All you have to do is shoot us an email, again, at wonderlandonpoints at gmail.com, and go ahead and throw in the subject line, credit card consultation. And let's start a conversation about how you can unlock the full potential of credit cards for your next adventure. We absolutely love hearing from our Wonderland on Points community, and we are so excited to connect with you. Okay, let's get back to the show. I do have an example of a time that we chose to use. Sometimes you will see a points plus cash option on the Hyatt website. And Mm. most of the time, most of the time, it really probably doesn't make sense to do that. But there is a, I'm calling it a glitch fair. I'm not sure if it is known. It's kind of known on the down low in the Hyatt community, but Hyatt has never changed it. The fair has been available for several years. I have Mm -hmm. used it. I've had friends use it, but it's kind of a glitch fair. And it's a situation where using points plus cash actually gives you an insane value. And so that is for, it's also a good example of where a fixed awards chart is awesome. So this is for a hotel just out, my favorite Hyatt to stay at just outside of New York in Jersey City, the Hyatt House, Jersey City. It's on a waterfront park. There's a beautiful playground right outside the hotel on the waterfront overlooking lower Manhattan. I really like this hotel. It's a great fit for our family, but it's even better because of this glitch fair. So Mm -hmm. they have a one bedroom king suite, which gives us two rooms because there's a door that separates a king room and a sofa bed. There's a little kitchen, nice little mini suite that you can book on points plus cash. It's A sweet points upgrade is kind of what it says in the Hyatt app. It's a points plus cash, 6,000 points per night, plus $120 cash for this room. Now, we visited in December. If you know Mm -hmm. anything about New York City, you know that December is a very popular time to go to New York. People want to see the Rockettes, get the Christmas spirit. So hotels are very expensive. So when we were going up to New York, we had booked this hotel through this kind of glitch fair for two nights, totaling 12,000 points and $243 out of pocket. I looked up what the cash price, if I only paid cash, no points for this room, you're not going to believe it. Guess, Joe. Guess. Okay. Uh, I'm bad at this. I would be so terrible on the prices right. Um, <laughs> for, uh, are we, or am I guessing per night or total? Two nights. Two okay, nights two nights. Let's say. In December. Let's say um, $750. And that would be a lot, right? That'd be like, ooh, I don't oh, know I would never. go. I yeah, would never. I don't know that we could go to New York and just spend seven thousand. I mean, seven hundred dollars on a hotel. But that's not it. That's not it, Joe. Remember, I paid two hundred, a little over two hundred, two hundred forty dollars out of pocket, twelve thousand points. The price per night, if I booked it with cash, one thousand three hundred and fifty one dollars. But so that means I saved. If I had booked that room with cash, it would have been $1,100 more than I paid. That? For two nights. Is insane. And you said, wait, I'm sorry. Did you say 6,000 points? That's it? Per Per night. night. It was 12,000 points. How? Which is like not many. I know. It's so anybody who wants to look that up, if you're going to New York, I love that hotel. Feel free to DM me. Let's keep the secret between us, though, yeah, because yeah, yeah, who knows yeah. how long this glitch fair will be there. But it's the Hyatt House, Jersey City, and you can find that little glitch fair. And it is an insane deal. But it's just a great example, though, 
that the tw- the 6,000 points per night with the cash, whatever, it's a fixed awards chart. So even though it was December and the cash price was through the roof, yeah, the points price did not change. It's going to be that particular fare that I booked is going to cost that same amount other times of the year. I mean, they do have, like you said, the standard price, the off peak and the pink, but it's I'm, not going to go above that. Right. That's amazing. I'm, a, I'm curious. Did you look at what the, the, just the points cost was versus the points plus cash? Was it like way higher? Yeah. So it didn't, it, the points plus cash in this weird glitch situation was actually a better deal than paying with points alone. Wow. That, which is why I did it. Yeah. yeah it was no, a better just, deal. It's a weird glitch in their system. So, so we are not bizarre. telling too many people about it, but. Except all of our listeners. Them, except it, for all of our listeners. Cause you guys are insiders. Thousands of you guys now, just <laughs> FYI. We're so happy you're here. Thousands. <laughs> Thousands. So this hotel, though, at peak pricing is 18,000 points per night normally. So even if I had paid 3,600 points, I mean, 36,000 points for the stay, if the cash price was $1,300, that's still a fantastic deal. Absolutely. But yeah, it sounds like the way you did it was genius because 12,000 points, like that can barely get you one night at some of the basic Hyatt's depending on where you're going. So that's just like so fun. New York at Christmas. Um, I think that we should talk through some other fun options before we do like a little bitty overview of status. I want people to understand. One thing I really want them to understand is why, okay, Chase points, if we're going to transfer them to transfer partners, let's nail down why we're not going to send them to IHG or Marriott. Oh, yes. they're great hotels. Like, are yeah. they better hotels or is are Hyatt hotels better than IHG or Marriott at face value? No, not really. I mean, mm-hmm. most of these hotels to me are kind of the same. So why are we so hyped up about Hyatt hotels? And I have a very tangible example for you guys. Yeah. So I searched San Diego, mm-hmm. random city. You could look in any city if you wanted to see the compare this. And I thought I'm going to look at a comparable hotel of each hotel brand in San Diego, sending our chase points. Remember, we're transferring the chase points out. So we're going to transfer chase points to Hyatt. We're going to stay at the Manchester Grand Hyatt San Diego 15,000 points per night. Okay. That's Hyatt, 15,000 points per night. If I chose the cheapest IHG that I could find in downtown San Diego, it was a Holiday Inn Express IHG, 38,000 points per night. So I could stay two nights at the Hyatt Hotel for less points than I could stay one night at the IHG Hotel. Mm -hmm. And even if you factor in right now, for example, Chase has a transfer bonus, which they do from time to time to IHG, 60% more points when you send them to IHG. Even with that transfer bonus, that room, instead of being 38,000 points, would be 24,000 points, Mm -hmm. which is still 9,000 more than if you stayed at the Hyatt. I hope this is making people understand how much better value it is to send a Hyatt than IHG. Same goes for Marriott. I found Mm -hmm. the most affordable Marriott's. There were a couple in downtown San Diego, 37,000 points if you go to Mm -hmm. Marriott. So again, you can stay two nights at the Hyatt for the price of one night at the Marriott, just because Hyatt has a better pricing structure. Absolutely. When I was looking into Orlando just to do some comparisons, now, obviously, a lot of people when they go to Disney are wanting to stay at the resorts that are actually affiliated with Disney, the good neighbor resorts, the on-property ones. And for those, as we have an entire episode about, you actually can find good deals in the portal. So That's not what I'm talking about. Just in general, if you compare the Marriott's in Orlando, the Hyatt place we are staying at is literally like across from Universal Studios. They shuttle you there. They have free breakfast. It's 8,000 points a night. The lowest priced Marriott that I could find in Orlando was 21,000. And it was nowhere near the theme parks 
and had none of the shuttles, perks, anything. In order to get that, you were going up to the 30s, the 40s, and beyond. The Hyatt place is certainly not going to be a resort level hotel. But for me, like that's not the experience that I need out of my time in Orlando. I'm just excited to go to Harry Potter World. I don't need any of the bells and whistles. I just want a nice clean hotel and some free breakfast. And that is what we are getting. So um, that's just another example of why it's such a good value. I mean, it's kind of insane. Let's talk people through people who do want to become loyal to Hyatt because Mm -hmm. there's the best value there. That's why we're driven there for the value. What are the the different award levels within Hyatt that you can become if you're a member? So I know that there's basic member, mm-hmm. there's discoverist, mm-hmm. explorist, and then globalist. And a lot yes. of the points and miles community talks about globalist and what they get for that. But give us a quick overview, Joe, of what each of these levels mean. And we'll talk about, you know, are they worth it? Do they actually have much value? Right. So the status levels afford you extra perks. And to be honest, the perks for the Discoverist level are basically non-existent. Um, yeah. Explorist and Globalist have a little bit more in terms of actually getting something. I know that you are going for Explorist, which will earn you two free club awards, right? Club lounge. Yeah, I'm working working my way there, but really just because that is what works out for our family this year. When I realized the the different nights that we were staying at a Hyatt, I was like, okay, it makes sense naturally to go for Explorist. I'm not going way out of my way for it, but it does make sense to get it if it is, you know, within your plans for the year. Right. So Discoverist, you can earn, and I guess I should preface this by saying that you can earn these statuses by staying a certain number of nights, spending a certain amount on your Hyatt credit cards, or you can earn nights towards qualifying for a status by opening certain credit cards. So I believe the personal card you opened comes with five qualifying nights per year. I think a lot of people are confused by that. That does not mean that you have five free nights that you get to use. It means that there are five less nights that you have to stay to earn your status. Right, right. The discoverist level, if you stay, I'm just going to go over the stays. I'm not going to go over the dollar amounts on the spend. So if a discoverist, um, a discoverist level you can earn by staying 10 nights, explorist by staying 30 nights and globalist by staying 60 nights. And I believe this is within a calendar year, January to December. Um, And like I said, discoverist and explorist, there's a few things you're supposed to get. um, You know, you might get early check-in, premium internet. And then of course I mentioned for the explorist level that you can earn the club lounge awards, but the reason people chase globalist is because that's really where you see a lot of fun benefits. You get right. sweet upgrades, free sweet upgrades, a 4 p.m. checkout if it's available, free parking on award stays, waived resort fees, guest of honor bookings, and at the really nice hotels that don't have free breakfast, you get free breakfast, which is yeah. a, a lot of value. <laughs> you know, free breakfast is my love language. So yeah. Honestly, that is the biggest perk. Somebody make me a sweatshirt that says free breakfast is my love language. Does I it, think if, when, okay. when our podcast gets merch, that's going to be our first, <laughs> first I sweatshirt. Was literally <laughs> just going to say that. Tell us <laughs> In our DMs, if you guys want that, because we will make you some merch, okay? And Free breakfast is our love language. Oh my gosh. I'm literally about to hop off here and design that right now. It'll be ready to go in 24 hours. We got hours. some cricket moms listening. Who has one of those cricket machines that can whip us yes. up some merch? <laughs> Free breakfast okay, is our love I language. literally have friends with crickets, so it's on. It is on. It's on. 
anyways, those are those are just the basics. I don't think we're going to dig super into them until we get an expert on that actually has um, globalists. So they can talk through because there are, as you might remember from our episode with Allie, there are various ways that you can get there. Um, it's not always very straightforward. And sometimes they run promotions that allow you to get there faster. Yeah, so, they do some fast track promotions. If you have a family member that works with certain companies, a lot of times there's a fast track to promotions. One thing that I do love, even though we've talked about discoverists and explorists don't give you a whole lot, they do give you, even at that first level, which if you have a World of Hyatt personal credit card, you're automatically a discoverist and you Mm -hmm. get automatic 2 p.m. late checkout, which is a small thing, but it also is something I appreciate, especially if we're trying to make the most of a day when we're visiting a new place and we you know, we're just making the most of our time. Sometimes that 2 p.m. late checkout can come in handy. So I do appreciate that. Is it worth going out of your way to get? Probably not. But it is something that I like about Discoverus, that kind of first tier status that you get automatically with the credit card. Yeah, that is nice. Um, Because if you call for a late checkout, when you are not at status, I think the latest I've ever gotten is a noon checkout. So they do, mm-hmm. um, you know, there there are little, little perks. And if it happens naturally for you, I would say, obviously, get your status. I just don't ever want people to stress about having status just because it's the thing to do. And like, you know, then are you actually making the most of your points or are you just kind of wasting them to chase status? I don't know. I have thoughts, but it does have some cool, cool benefits to yeah. it. Um, I was hoping to tell everybody about like three of the most fun and most interesting Hyatt stays that are on my bucket list. Do you have any? Yes. Do you have any bucket list places that you want to tell us about? I have. I can think of a couple. I can think of a couple. I there's one. I'm not a big all inclusive girl. Um, Mm. I know a lot of. I know. I know. Look at you gasping. (laughs) I mean, all inclusives are fun, but I'm. We have established that I'm not a super beach person and most all inclusives are in beach locations. So Mm. would I go to one? Absolutely. And love it and enjoy it. Enjoy my time there. But most of my stays are more, you know, Switzerland. Of course, that's the biggest bucket list one for me that we're crossing off this year. There's a Park Hyatt in Zurich. And so going Mm. to some of those beautiful cities and and countries are bigger on my list. But in saying that, if I was going to pick an all-inclusive with Hyatt, it would be the Hyatt Ziva Cancun. And I have had, I've known some people to go there and give rave reviews. Mm -hmm. So in the Hyatt portfolio, I think the Hyatt Ziva, Hyatt Ziva Cancun It'd be that that's on my list. That's a place that I do hope to go at some point, maybe with a girlfriend. May, I mean, with my husband, I don't think I would ever take my children there. Mm-mm. But I'm raising my hand. I would like to yes. go with you. Let me let me call on you, Joe. Take me. Take me with you. I volunteer. Are you going to come? Yep. <laughs> okay, yes. perfect. But actually, I, I, that one is on was one of my three. So now we'll just strike it? it off the list. Yes, it was. Um, I hear great things about the Hyatt Zebas. I've heard great things about the one in Cancun and the one in uh, the Los Cabos location. Okay. And those can be, depending on the time of year, those can be like, 500 to seven something a night. And yeah. the points pricing is, I believe the standard points pricing is 25K a night. Um, so, I mean. I was looking, I was looking today actually at Hyatt Ziva Cancun and I, for November, I was looking just kind mm-hmm. of randomly November mm-hmm. of this year. It was 35,000 a night for two people. Okay. So that maybe that's their peak pricing is 35,000 or maybe the award chart changed, but I see people all the time talking about can we take our family to these all-inclusives? 
And uh, so yeah. you have to be careful because that 35,000 points per night sounds really good for an all-inclusive. It's for two people, Yep. which may be what you want to do, a couple's getaway. And in that situation, I think that that's still a good deal and fun. And I would pay that amount of points because I'm all about family travel and do more family travel with kids mm -hmm. for four people. If you do get a room that can fit four people, it's 69,000 points per night. So you might as well get two rooms at that point, at least have mm -hmm. some separation in two rooms, or you can pay a cash price for your kids. And right yes. now I've been seeing it quoted at as $127 a night per kid. So some yes. people will pay for the room price for two, yeah. so 35,000 points per night, and then say they have two kids they're bringing with them, they add an extra $127 per night for each kid, yeah. which to me starts adding up yeah. and gets a little too pricey when I think back to that amazing Hyatt Place San Juan that I stayed in Puerto Rico for 12,000 points per night for all five of my family members together yes. Yes. for 12,000 points versus me paying 70,000 points plus, or, you know, it's, that's where I kind of have my rub with all inclusives for family travel, yeah. not for couples or, you know, bestie trips or whatever, but for family travel, I'm kind of out on that. I totally agree. All, when I think of all inclusive, I only think of it in terms of like romantic trip or girl trip. I would also probably do like a mother daughter trip to an all inclusive. Oh, I yeah. think that would be so fun. But to me, like, I, I, we wouldn't spend that much money on food per day. Like, if I was adding my daughter at the cash price of, you know, 120 or whatever you said it was, we would not be spending $120 a day on her food. Therefore, to me, it's not worth it. Like I would much right. rather go to a much cheaper Hyatt with free breakfast, load up on that, buy one meal for each of us. I think that ends up probably being cheaper in the long haul. But like I'm all about that, that budget life. But the all inclusives for just two people for a romantic getaway for me, like all your food and drinks, like I'm not a really big drinker, but if I'm like laying on a beach give me a pina colada. And when you're in a <laughs> tropical location, those can be like 10, 12, $13 a drink. And then you tip and like that adds up really, really fast. So true. that is what I love about the all inclusives It's kind of got that cruise vibe, but without the shocking alcohol bill <laughs> after your cruise. <laughs> uh, can you tell that I have a personal story with that once? It was literally like 12 years ago, but oh my gosh, it was horrible. Um, that's Did you not know? Wait, I do want to hear the story. You got a huge bill? I, first of all, did not pay the gratuities ahead of time, had no idea that how crazy that was going to be. Second of all, when you're on a cruise, you just charge the drinks to your room and you don't really realize, first of all, how much they are. Second of all, how fast they're adding up. Cruise drinks are like 15 mm. bucks a piece. We... We're getting ready Yikes. to leave our cruise and got the bill slid under our door. It was like $750. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, this, I, this is something I know nothing about because I've never been on a cruise. But for our listeners, this kind of gets me excited to tell everybody Ooh. that Ryan from At Profits and Points is going to come back on the podcast in a few mm -hmm. weeks mm -hmm. to tell us all about Points and Miles how that can help with the cruise life. So I'm yes. excited to learn more. It's all in my journey to sometimes get over my biggest fear of taking a cruise. You're <laughs> so going to do we're it. We're going to be there. You're going to do it and it's going to be amazing. The last Hyatt that I want to throw out before we wrap up is a Hyatt that when I saw the price for the dates that I was looking at it, I literally almost passed out. And the price was in euros, which means it's actually more in dollars. The Park Hyatt Paris, okay? Yes. For the date that I was looking, which was just a random date, I had found a really good deal on a flight. And so I was poking around in the Hyatt app on those dates. First of all, I will tell you the points. It starts at 40,000 points per night. Okay. Okay. The euro amount was 4,200. 
per night. Wait, I took wait a, a screenshot of it. I took a screenshot. <laughs> wait a minute. Yes. Tell yes. me that again. Now I'm wondering if the dates I was looking at were during the Olympics. Possible. Oh, maybe. Possible. Was it this summer? August? I, I don't even July, remember August? what the date was because the screenshot is just like the blown up total. I didn't even save the dates where I was looking because I'm not actually doing the trip. I was just like poking around. Um, but that would make sense why it was that crazy high. 4,200 euros, which I mean, let's do a quick conversion. Euros to dollars. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, thank you so much for finishing that. No one else ever does that with me. No one ever knows what classical song I'm singing. All right. Oh, okay. 4,200 euros is $4,544.67. You guys. And how many points was it? 40,000. I mean, wow. okay, let's do a little more math we doing while we're at it. Per point? Is that like 10 cents per point? I mean, I feel like that's right. Let's see. Let's just say 40. Roughly. Yeah. Goodness. That is a great deal. 11.36 cents per point. Thank you, calculator. Mm-hmm. Because, yes. and you know. that, that is points and miles, my friend. That is why you do this. That's that, why you get the credit cards. That is so. Wow crazy that is so crazy you can open up a couple of credit cards and you could stay four nights maybe depending on which cards you're opening at that price i'm thinking specifically more of like the inks but who who can spend four thousand five hundred dollars for one night at a hotel also if, if you even have that kind of money why would you want to? Why would you spend $5,000 a night instead of earning right. some points and spending your points? Why? Save your money for something else. Send it to me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if you want to throw your money away on a hotel, give me the $5,000. I'll show you how to book it on points, okay? That's All right. right. <laughs> I'm like worked up. I'm worked up. That's amazing. Yeah, I just wanted to share that because I feel like that is the pinnacle of like what you can do with Hyatt. One more on my dream list. I have, uh, so we talked about the all-inclusive and Europe, which is probably our main areas that we love, you know, being in the U.S. That's, Mm -hmm. I don't know, what we think of a lot for travel is Europe. But I would love to go one day. Hyatt's are worldwide, friends, okay? It's not just the U.S. and Europe. I really want to go to South Korea. And I want to stay. There's several Park Hyatt's there that are only 20,000 points per night for a Park Hyatt or Grand Hyatt. And so there's a Grand Hyatt Jeju Island, which this is where I'm wearing my nerd glasses today because... (laughs) What I really use these glasses for are reading subtitles. I only put them on at night when I'm reading subtitles and watching my K-dramas on yes. Netflix. Oh, my gosh. And so all of my K-dramas happen on this little island called Jeju Island off of South Korea. And so I really want to go to have a whole South Korea trip and stay at some of the Park Hyatt's and the Grand Hyatt Jeju that's only 20,000 points per night. And it is so nice. Things and other in... Japan and South Korea, they are so much nicer than America. And they, so much cheaper. Cleaner and the, cheaper the and cleaner. Disney yeah. in Japan, I hear that all the time. Disney in Japan is way yes. cheaper and like nicer. And honestly, with points and miles, you can get flights there so affordably that it almost yeah. makes more sense to go to Disney there than in the <laughs> U.S. It's really true. I feel like, ooh, I feel like we need to find somebody. Hey, guys, send us your recommendations. If you have somebody who wants to talk specifically about using points and miles to um, get to Japan or, you know, maybe some other Asian countries, I feel like we haven't totally breached that I know yet. some people. I oh, know some oh. people. Oh, Marianne yeah, has already we... got the people. Never mind. We don't want your recommendations. <laughs> no, I still I'm want kidding. your recommendations. <laughs> I'm kidding. 
Oh my gosh. Well, this has me so hyped for Hyatt. Oh, that sounds like another like phrase that I would wear on a piece Hyped of merch. For Hyatt. Okay, now we have two pieces of merch. We've got to get our store open. You know, we're, maybe we should have people vote on which one they would actually wear. We'll put it. We'll put it in the gram and let you guys vote in a poll. Yes. Yes, yeah. we will. And if anybody is like a super great artist and wants to draw us a design for free, send it to our email. Wonderland on point. Highlight you at gmail.com. We will certainly highlight you. We will. We'll throw you out to the world, our very, very small corner of the world that I'm very appreciative of. Well, I hope that you guys have learned some things today mm-hmm. and it makes more sense of why we are so obsessed with the world of Hyatt point structure and why we typically recommend and so many of our guests talk about booking at Hyatt hotels because the value is just there. Mm -hmm. It is there over IHG, Marriott, Hilton, and they have some wonderful hotels and there are reasons to use those hotels, you know, dream locations. And we'll have guests on that can get play devil's advocate a little bit and maybe tell us more about try to change our minds and try to get (laughs) us over there to one of those others. But now you know a little bit about why we love Hyatt so much. Absolutely. And the Hyatt footprint is not as big as those guys. So that is the one drawback. You cannot go as many places on Hyatt's, which is why that is kind of my first check whenever I want to go anywhere. But Thank you guys so much for being with us today. Please let us know if you have questions because this is a lot. It's always a lot. And we want to clarify. I loved, loved getting these questions in my DMs. And we're so happy to be able to answer them on the pod. We appreciate you all being with us. And we will see you next time. If you enjoyed this show today, please consider writing us a review or clicking five stars wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please subscribe and follow along so that you never miss an episode. You can follow the podcast on Instagram or YouTube at Wonderland on Points Podcast. You can find me on Instagram at Family Travel for the Win with the number four. And you can find me on Instagram at Points to Wonderland. If you're thinking about getting a new travel rewards credit card, consider using the links in our show notes. Using our links helps to support us and keep our podcast going so we can provide you with all the latest tips and tricks when it comes to traveling on points. And if you aren't sure which card is right for you, shoot us an email at wonderlandonpoints at gmail.com and we would be happy to walk you through a free card consultation. That's also a great place to send us all of your comments and questions. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you here next time.